Um, your work is one big statement, and uh, as you have just said yourself, the rationality is very much a part of that, but it has been such a strong statement that many designers who came after you, or even contemporaries of yours, um, you have made to go in completely different directions. They saw your work and said, I'm going to do something entirely different. You're right. How did you feel about this? Well, I had the same struggle myself. When I started, for instance, to work for the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam, my most important red line of work in my career, I had to fight against Sandberg. And he, Sandberg was a great teacher of us all. He was a great designer. He, yeah. he, he really made a model of uh, posters and catalogs for, for uh, uh, he was an international model for museum work. And when I was asked to do, to follow his, to be a follower of him, to do all the design for that museum, I thought I should do something completely different. So I had to also, I had to fight against someone who I loved completely, who I, he was very influential also in my life, and I knew him personally also so well. So on one hand I thought I should fight with him, on the other hand I didn't like to fight with him, and that was a great struggle. But it made me feel very strong that I should do something else. Yeah. And that is a, a, it is a, a motive why you do certain type of work. You always have to force yourself from something that you like, but you don't want to follow, or you or you dislike. Yes, the um, name of Willem Sandberg is uh, probably not known to everyone in the audience. Um, he's one of the great Dutch designers from the uh, 50s and early 60s, and I can uh, heartily recommend you to uh, try. Uh, and have a look at his work and uh, study it. It's wonderful. It's uh, very imaginative and uh, he actually did uh, adapt letter forms and typography to the subjects he, uh, he absolutely did. dealt with. He was, uh, to my opinion, he was a, a painter between the designers. Uh, I have seen him, I've often seen him working because he was a very interesting man. He could always do meetings and work together. Whenever he had a meeting with people, he was always having a piece of paper in front of him and designing his catalogs, and in the same time following the, the order of the discussion. But he, when he worked, he was uh, shifting his pieces of paper and color, looking through his eyebrows, and like a painter looks at his paintings, and very, uh, uh, with, with a certain touch, he was always working. So completely different for, from me. Well, not entirely true, Wim. Uh, what I remember from uh, uh, working with you in 1967 is that you um, have um, a printed piece of paper with a grid on it in front yeah. of you, and that you have the phone uh, here, and meanwhile you are moving uh, pieces maybe of paper I, about, I, illustrations. Maybe I could do also two things at the same time. You yes, did. But, I saw you do but, it. But I did it on a, grid of, a piece of gridded paper, and some don't never use no. credit paper. That's the difference, indeed. Um, what do you see as the uh, future of graphic design? We have already touched on this a bit, but when well, you th when you well, think the thing is, the thing is that in, uh, yesterday they showed a very old uh, detail of a movie done in 1970, where I explained that in my vision. Uh, the future will be that we are system designers, that we do a certain framework within the, where, within the solution is to be found. And uh, I still have the impression that it goes in that direction, that designers are opening a way for the final uh, design, but are not the, the people who really have to do the final design. They they make the structure, they make the, the, the three-dimensional uh, framework, 
in which the final solution is and maybe other people could finalize the subject so that within a certain basic framework more solutions are, are possible and available and uh, I still have the impression what I thought in 1970 I, I once gave a lecture on the subject uh, and uh, I was I was uh, flattered that they showed this piece yesterday night and I thought well I might have been right in 1970 and I still think in that direction that the future will be uh, that designers will be more or less the, 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 the ones who prepare design up to a certain level and then it's finalized by, by the users themselves. That's what's happening to typography on screen. Exactly. Very much. Yeah. So, uh, that, uh, and we are halfway already, right? halfway that development. I have a beautiful example with me of um, such a sort of uh, completion of um, a system set up by you. Um, it's difficult to show to the audience, but um, if you go on the web and you type in the new, new alphabet, you will come to something very surprising. An English artist um, has designed a sort of overlays for your new alphabet so that it becomes easily legible. You haven't seen this? I don't remember. <laughs> Have a look at it. There is no end to human ingenuity, I think. No, I see. And, uh, <laughs> and this it, it, anyhow, this is much more readable than my typeface. <laughs> <laughs> it's but I haven't seen it before, no, I haven't seen it. The new, new alphabet. Oh. He should have warned me. <laughs> I think so, yes. Yeah. He, he considered this a, a work of art of himself. Oh. Ryan Gander, the name of the uh, artist is, maybe you should I'll uh, get, in, my computer. I'll get in touch my with him and uh, to do that. claim it's the copyright. An interesting, an interesting <laughs> solution, it's an interesting solution. Strained all the ashes that come out. I oh, printed yes. it out yesterday and started reading it, and uh, to my surprise, you can it, read it uh, much and much better. It's oh, very easy. It's absolutely true. But that's the same thing that happened in the 90s, when my new alphabet was appeared on record sleeves in England, and uh, suddenly I saw in pop magazines that young English designers you made headings out of my new alphabet, but always trying to make it a little more legible. <laughs> And this is, this is a real uh, follower of that direction. Yes, um, Wim. Um, you have been educated in Groningen a long time ago. And graphic design education then was very different from what it is today. Part of your education must have been writing, calligraphy. Did you do that? Never. <laughs> uh, I was trained in a very old-fashioned art school where only painting, etching, uh, lithography and so on was going on. And we didn't even do typography. We didn't, uh, we learned, photography was forbidden even. So I had a very old-fashioned arts and crafts training. And, and when I came to Amsterdam, immediately after that, I went to Amsterdam. I thought there it goes to happen. and. Uh, there I went to the evening classes of the Amsterdam Design School and there, for the first time, I learned a little bit about typography. And, but uh, calligraphy, I've never done calligraphy, no. I hate calligraphy. You do. <laughs> um, you see here, on the table in front of you, a couple of um, utensils and... Um, let me try. What, you want me to do calligraphy? That's right. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I wouldn't even know how to do it. An old-fashioned pen, an old-fashioned East Indian ink. Yes, Wim. Uh, what what I remember from um, being your assistant is that when I arrived at nine o'clock in the morning at my desk, you wouldn't be there, but on my desk would be a note on ruled paper um, written 
with your typical blue fountain pen ink. Yeah, yeah. And I saw a similar note in your exhibition, and ah, it brought back yeah. uh, great Memory. memories. Um, that is a sort of calligraphy, what you practice. It's, there's no doubt about that. Uh, I cannot can read my own handwriting. <laughs> You see, they have prepared this all very carefully. They are now going to try and make you write. What do you want me to write? A message to the audience. Give me the word. A short message to the audience. Ah. Well, I think this one is better. This is a real calligraphic pen. Yeah, these, these, this one is more wide. Well, this is a very special occasion. This is a rare occasion, I would say. I should move away a bit. It's a small of ink, I think. I, first of all, I have to think what I write down. Right, yeah. And then I try to do something. <laughs> now we're talking. you are aware that you're watching a historical moment of Wim Crowell doing calligraphy <laughs> in his day and age. Will you read it for the um Audience, Wim? Keep your radar turning to register all that is happening, but find your own direction. These are valuable words, and I thank you very much for the interview. It was a thank great you. pleasure. Thank you. I hope you'll have a nice day here. Bye. <laughs> thank you, Wim Krawon. Thank you, Sarah Thank you very much for your interview.